Okay, there's been a lot of interesting breaches and I think that the interest is understanding how those things occur. Um, um, and I think that if you look at things like Target, which is a big retailer in the US, what's interesting about it? Loads of point of sale data was stolen, okay? Headline news, it's a bad thing, right? But actually the interesting part about that to me is that the breach occurred through an external supplier. So they had an HVAC supplier, like many companies do, an HVAC supplier is essentially is, uh, recruited to kind of control power costs, utility costs, heating, lighting, bring it down. To do that in the modern connected world we live in, they need to be connected to that organisation. So here's this third party connecting this case to Target. The third party was breached, and by uh, nature of that, it meant the bad guys could attack Target. Now the key thing about that is you have to think about the third parties connected to an organization, and, but also you have to think about how you've segmented your security and segmented your network. So what we would consider a fairly basic thing internally within a company is to just allow the appropriate people access to the appropriate resources. Why does someone in sales need core accounts data? They possibly don't. Why does an accounts person need the sales data? They probably don't. And in the case of Target, what actually occurred is when that organisation was breached, the third party came in, they had access to everything. Like, why would an HVAC supplier need any access to point of sale devices? They don't. And it's easy with hindsight, but with some foresight, it would have been far better if they'd segmented their network. So there's a lot of key lessons that can be um, uh, taken out of this. I think the other thing is there's been um, a lot of retail breaches, particularly in the States. Um, there's a, there are, unfortunately there's a butt of jokes taking place at the moment which says uh, if you're dealing with a US retailer why don't we pay with cash rather than credit card. So I'm not sure I quite subscribe to that. Um, but uh, there is a rash of attacks taking place because the data is valuable. And again there's a misnomer that I think the bad guys are going to attack, steal the data and do something with it. Well actually what most of them do is steal the data and sell it onto a third party. The third party then deploys a horrible piece of software to do something with it, but the horrible piece of software, they're not necessarily the coders, they're not the guys who've written this. So behind all this activity that's taking place, behind all the high profile events you see taking place, there are a bunch of cyber criminals, but there's layered approaches taking place with huge communities in the bad side of things attacking organisations for their nefarious means. So I think there's a lot of lessons to be learned, but I think that the real key lesson is that putting technology and boxes out there and expecting it to stop attacks and sleeping sound at night, just forget it. So last century it doesn't exist. We need to change the way we approach security. I think there's a challenge right, with deployment of technology uh, because the way we deploy technology is fundamental to everything we do. Imagine a world without the internet. Some companies wouldn't exist without the internet. Maybe it's the only way they trade. But in essence, if we turn the internet off tomorrow, lots of companies would suffer. Most of us would suffer as individuals. Maybe we haven't got email access. Where would we be? So the internet and technology have crept up and become more than normal way of operating. Uh, people talk about Generation Y. To my simplistic uh, view, that means younger people. Younger people, as they come on board, have been brought up with technology. They're used to not living and they find eight to five uh, at, uh, eight to five, seven day a week. They're used to a 24 seven environment. They're used to the lines of social media and being able to use it. They don't really see the barriers between business and social use. So there's a different world we're living in. And so because of that, People have used technology in the past, not necessarily thinking about security concerns. Where we're really at at the moment is we need to think about security much like we do with any other form of security. So like your house. If you've got a house, you live in a high crime area, you're probably thinking about putting locks on the doors, locks on the windows, maybe iron bars. What people don't necessarily associate is if I was protecting my house in that way in a high, high crime area, and if someone knocked on my door and said, I'm from the gas board, can you just let me in your house and wander around for three or four hours? You probably wouldn't say yes. You'd probably ask them some credentials or you'd shadow them. You'd be a bit concerned. But with things like phishing attacks, an email comes in, purports to look in my scenario there with a gas board or a trusted advice, we don't check it and we say yes, we click and we allow people in. So people aren't making the correlation between IT security and how to protect ourselves from risk avoidance with how we live our normal lives. To be fair, IT is a relatively short period of um, time in, in human development. Everything else we've learned over centuries and centuries of responses. So we have to adapt and we have to adapt fairly quickly. There's a price to be paid with all this internet con connectivity. And in terms